The purpose of this screencast is to review the basic structure and function of ion channels. Electrical signals in the nervous system, graded potentials and action potentials, are generated by movement of ions across the nerve cell membrane. Recall that ions flow through the pores of membrane proteins known as ion channels or channel proteins. Ion channels are multimeric integral membrane proteins that span the cell membrane and form aqueous or water-filled pores that ions can flow through. The quaternary structure consists of four to six subunits that together form the whole channel protein. The number of subunits depends on the type of channel. For example, gap junctions are made up of six subunits. Ligand-gated channels are made up of five subunits. And voltage-gated channels are made up of four subunits. Ion channels are necessary because the neuronal plasma membrane is a lipid bilayer. The lipid bilayer is essentially impermeable to ions because ions are charged particles and attract water strongly. It is therefore energetically unfavorable for ions to move through the lipid bilayer. Ion channels allow ions to cross the membrane at speeds of 10 to the 8th ions per second, much faster than enzymatically mediated reactions and thereby mediate rapid changes in the membrane potential. Ion channels also recognize and exhibit specificity for specific ion species, for example, sodium, potassium, chloride, and calcium. Most types of ion channels allow only one ion species, while some allow two or more. For example, potassium channels have a narrow pore that excludes sodium ions. Although a sodium ion is smaller, in solution it has a larger effective diameter because it attracts a larger cloud of water molecules, known as the waters of hydration or hydration shell. Sodium channels, on the other hand, have what's known as a selectivity filter, which is based on the amino acids that line the pore and which selectively allow sodium ions to flow through. Ions are subject to two forces which influence the direction and the magnitude of flux or flow of the ions. The first is the diffusional or chemical force, which is the driving force acting on ions due to differences in relative concentrations of ions across the membrane. Recall that no ion species is distributed equally on the two sides of the membrane. For example, sodium and chloride are more concentrated in the extracellular fluid while potassium is more concentrated in the intracellular fluid. Ions want to flow down their concentration gradients to reach equilibrium. This is the basis for the diffusional force. So as we can see here, if sodium and chloride are more concentrated in one side of the membrane and they're given a way to cross the membrane, they'll flow until they reach equilibrium. So let's try a concept check question. Remember to hit the pause button until you're ready to hear the answer. What would happen to the diffusional driving force on chloride if the concentration of chloride outside the cell increased? Would it decrease, increase, or not change? So go ahead and hit the pause button until you're ready for the answer. So the answer is that the diffusional driving force on chloride would increase if the concentration of chloride outside the cell increased. Why? Remember that chloride is more concentrated in the extracellular fluid than in the intracellular fluid. So if we increase the concentration of chloride outside the cell, there'll be an even greater difference between the concentration in the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid. And therefore, we would increase the diffusional driving force on chloride. Keep in mind that this force is only due to differences in the concentration of the ions across the cell membrane. The second force acting on ions is the electrostatic or electrical force, which is the driving force acting on ions due to differences in electrical charge across the membrane. Recall that opposite charges attract. Thus a cation like sodium will be attracted to a negative charge, and an anion like chloride will be attracted to a positive charge. In cells, the basis for the electrical charge is the membrane potential. So here's another concept check question for you. 
Again, remember to hit the pause button until you're ready to hear the answer. What would happen to the electrostatic driving force on chloride if the membrane potential changed from minus 65 millivolts to minus 55 millivolts? Would it decrease, increase, or not change? So go ahead and hit the pause button until you're ready for the answer. So the answer is that it would decrease. Why is that? Recall that the electrostatic force is the driving force acting on ions due to differences in electrical charge across the membrane. The electrostatic driving force changes when the charge separation across the membrane is changed, that is, when the membrane potential changes. So let's say we have 0 millivolts here, and minus 55 millivolts here, and minus 65 millivolts here. In this case, the membrane potential started at minus 65 millivolts and was changed to minus 55 millivolts. Since the membrane potential is negative and chloride is an anion, there will be an outward electrical force on chloride. Remember that like charges repel each other. If the membrane potential is decreased from minus 65 millivolts to minus 55 millivolts, that means there is less charge separated across the membrane, and the interior of the membrane has fewer negative charges along its surface. Therefore, there is still an outward electrical force on chloride, but there is less of an electrical force on chloride than when the membrane potential was at minus 65 millivolts. And that concludes this screencast on the basic structure and function of ion channels. If you have any questions, please bring them to recitation or office hours.